All right, we're here with another video from Melanated Media News where alternative independent thinking is as simple as breathing. Now, today we're going to do something a little different. I highly advise before you watch this video to go to our gentrification playlist on the YouTube channel and watch this video titled The After Effects of Public Housing Crisis in the Black Community, which thoroughly explains what I will be explaining in the video a little bit better, more in depth. And you'll have a better, greater understanding of this process and what to look for. We have footage from a recent East Cleveland meeting on two developers or two gentlemen that are developers that want to remodel, rehab uh, a big, abandoned, dilapidated building. And present at the meeting was the mayor of East Cleveland, several council members, and residents. And there was conversations going back and forth. So I'll give my input as we watch the video and what to look for during these conversations if this is a gentrification situation or uh, something where the community or your community, any, commu any community that's predominantly black or people of color that could be taken advantage of and what to look for. So let's begin the video. How long have you been in this business? I 20 years. Do you have Plus. any, you're saying you, you're going to charge what for rent? $800. And you asked the city to do what for you? Donate the building. Donate the building. Like they did in Salvation Army. Well, we're not Salvation Army. Or I can for 30 more years. Uh, mm -hmm. or so I'm a, I'm, I'm a little afraid of what you're doing because of the fact D.C. now has taxed people out of the city out of the state of uh, Washington, D.C. And I'm very cognizant of that, and there are many other cities. And so Sir, this is not gentrification, because gentrification is, is when you're not, when, you, when you're coming in, when you put up for sale for something, you call it gentrification. We don't control who buys a property. This is not for sale. This is for rent. So it's very important for people to understand that East Cleveland is the city where most of the residents live below the poverty line. The city is, I think, $2 million uh, bankrupt. They don't have a lot of money, a lot of resources, but it's a great location, which is why the investors want to uh, invest in the community as far as building a building. And that's very, very important for this conversation. Now, on the topic of them saying that they're renting and not buying so they can't tax out people in the in the instance of this video they may not raise the sales or different things like that because they're renting okay we understand that but the key point of this video is is that they're going to tell you it's eight hundred dollars if the majority of the community is living below the poverty line, they're not going to be able to afford that $800 rent. And the reason that I spoke of the video to watch in the beginning before you watch this video is that the cultural, the cultural barrier between, you can say, the whites and uh, black people or the poor and the have and have-nots is the reason why this doesn't work. Now, this is this may not be a mixed income situation, but it would still attract those who tend to have the money in a mixed income situation. So maybe you're not taxing them out, but what you're doing is you're creating a situation where you'll be attracting what we call the creative class, which is when you the, the people that are the target audience for a community that's being gentrified are the creative class, the millennials, the single the single people, the bachelor lifestyle people, those with money, those who work and play downtown, who live close to downtown. This, lo this location of the building is very close to downtown. So that's very, very important to keep in mind is that it's not about Gentrification is not just taxing people out and that's it. So in this situation, it's going to be bringing in a certain group of people who have no idea how the people in this community operate. And that's the people already have animosity towards the politics of the area. It's already a division there. And when you bring the people, when you attract people who can afford this place, it'll just make 
more animosity or to make uh, more gas, you know, in the fire, so to speak, in this situation. So, and that wasn't really discussed. And that's why I'm doing this videos because it's not about just taxing the people. It's about attracting the people and the people who eventually live there, they're going to, they're going to be proactive. They're going to go to the meetings. They're going to have police. All of this stuff is documented. It's, it's been in studies for years since the eighties. It's in that video that I recommended in the beginning. There's lots of documents and studies that show that the mixed income does not work. Now, it's not a mixed income building if there's a set price, but the people who, who can afford it make more money probably than everyone else who lives in that city for the most part. So it'll be a mixed income within the city and the surrounding uh, streets because those people can't afford to live there. I understand that. That's what has caused the people in the, the DC. It needs to be social. It needs to be a social project. If, if it's just a, if it's just you coming here to capitalize off of our chaos or mm -hmm. opportunize off of something, it's not going to work. I don't care what you have. You, you, you have to really understand what you're getting yourself into. I mean, I heard you say you don't understand the red tape. Well, that's what you really going to have to understand. Well, we it's a social. Know. This is this has to be social. He said that it's going to be residential property for vets, correct? No. No, no anybody, anybody. Anybody wants to, to rent the, the rental property. He never said okay. that. He never said that. Well, the elderly, the elderly, the vets, and the, and the children, they come first in this community. I'm the vet. Okay, that's cool. I, I, hear me out. If it's, not benefit, if it's not benefiting them, I don't want anything to do with it. We, 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 Period. We're, we're trying to like he out. said, with the taxes and all of that, like yeah. it has to go. We we suffering here. Mm -hmm. If you all gonna do anything here, we need parts of it. Now, whoever was just whoever was just speaking, that gentleman, he gets it. He understands it. It's if these people do not understand the so, social aspect, there's studies, as I said, that proves it does not work. And they're not going to attract the residents that live in East Cleveland. Essentially, what we have here is that it's a desperate city. They need revenue. And we can't just jump at every opportunity and accept crumbs at the table and donate a humongous building for, you know, little to nothing, little to no money. These studies show that the neighbors, they barely speak, maybe four times out the year in these types of communities. Uh, they, the police are called on more often because they don't understand. They think, well, if black people are outside, they must be selling drugs. So if you have a situation where the community and people are already upset about the lack of opportunities, when you bring the people who can afford this rent, they're going to look, there's going to be so much animosity towards these people because, and in addition to that culture barrier, in addition to, so neither side is really going to understand each other and it's just going to create a hostile environment. So the senior citizens may not be afford the $800 rent on their fixed income and also as far as the younger people, those with kids and single parent homes and, you know, Section 8 housing, we don't want to get into that situation either. That's just as bad, maybe, if not worse. So it's a very, these situations, the developers, like he said, they've been doing this 20 years. And I'm not, I'm not saying these guys are disingenuous. I'm just saying in general, in these situations, the people know the community is desperate. They know, I mean, you can see the community and see that it needs help. If you want the help, they're here to help. They're not here to change nothing or kick all the black folks out and bring white folks in. I already know the, the mentality already. It's not about that. It's yes. about taking these abandoned. Okay, let's be clear. They're there to make money. They're not, they're, they may, I, I don't know about you you're saying they're not there to help. They're not. I mean, we know what happens 10 times out of 10 times in these situations. And we can't get into guilt tripping people 
for seeing how historically um, what has happened in these situations when people develop newer buildings in, you know, less than desirable communities, but they have a great location. So we don't want to get into this whole, uh, you should feel bad for being suspicious. Well, why wouldn't you be suspicious? If we see the situation we in and we see historically what happens, you should be suspicious. You should be cautious if you care about your home, if you care about your community. Not saying the gentleman that was just speaking doesn't. I'm just saying in general, in these situations, we should ask all the questions that we can, all, especially the educated questions. Buildings, especially this one next to an elementary school and a high school. Yes. Let's fix these buildings up and give our city a, a good look. One thing about business, it's not emotional. There's no feelings in business. They're bringing money here to fix this, fix this city up. I don't see, I don't see nobody else doing that. But where's the help though? Uh, sir, don't go debate here. I don't understand you, what you help you're talking floor. about. The help, is, so the help is, the help is, people are bringing okay. financial funds into mm -hmm. East Cleveland to help rebuild East Cleveland. They're gonna hire locally to qualify people. And who's breaking down the door to do development in East Cleveland? Well, he's right, but he's right about the wrong person. Maybe that gentleman, that gentleman is not being emotional. And it's the people who invited the people here. It's because the city is desperate. So the city is being emotional because they're being desperate. And I don't think the right questions were asked. Why do we keep donating properties and locations that people should be paying for? That's part of the trick. Like everybody that's helping to build and make something look nice, they're not there to help. They don't. They're they're there for their selfish um, financial gain more than to help. They're there to make money. So we we really have to get out of this mentality. Oh, we've been living in poverty for so long. And someone wants to come build something that's nice for us, and. Is it worth to have local people work on the building for, let's say, two to three years or whatever and renovate it and build it up nice? But the only people, the people who work on that, that live there locally, are they going to be able to afford to live there? I highly doubt that. You're asking for us to donate you this, I'll give you this land, versus you paying us something. You will be making a profit once you get the home built yes. and the rent going. Mm -hmm. Will you yes. also be seeking government entitlement for the rent to help you make a uh, profit for yourself? And if you're making all this money, why can't you just pay for the land up front? We can now. There's a price for $4,900. We'll do that right now. <laughs> oh, y'all heard that? You're asking for the land free. <laughs> We feel we're, we're coming here, honest. We feel we should get as much help from the city because our uphill battle to make a profit on this is extremely high. Okay? But we're damn good at our job, too. Yeah, but the law is not making the money. In the law, you will be making the money. So we're willing to pay the city, what, that $490,000 per person? So basically $5,000 per person. Per that was you guys feel you want Section 8 housing in the no, city? No, I'm not asking okay. for you if that is I, your plan, sir. I was gave it to Charlie, but what I could feel at eight hundred dollars, you don't need to be Section 8. I agree. So, okay. and I, you know, that sometimes brings problems, but I don't know. That's up. You guys tell me what you want. Well, that's so. that, that's what well, that's what I'm You're saying we versus that we have a empty building there that's given no resident res Revenue. Revenue. Revenue versus to when y'all come in that you will have be paying taxes. Mm -hmm. So that's the income for the city. Right. I just wanted to ask that question. Thank you. And, and I, I know that building's been vacant <coughs> for at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. At least 10 years. And the families that move in it will be paying taxes. Right. Bringing children back to the Thank East Cleveland City Schools. So generate, bringing generate residents. businesses around the area. Generating revenue for the city. Well, number one, these people may not even have children in these mixed income communities, even though this isn't a mixed income community, I understand. But generally, the creative class does not have children. They're working downtown, they're playing, they're more focused on their careers. 
Second, there's a cultural barrier. They do not under, they're not going to understand the people of East Cleveland. So to expect them to spend money in East Cleveland if they don't understand the people and the culture of East Cleveland is it doesn't even make sense. It just sounds good and that's all. I see plus plus. One of the one of the one of the guys on Facebook posted a picture of East Cleveland back in the day. Yeah. If you, if you don't see that, if you see that picture and it don't move you to make this city move forward, something's wrong with you living here in East Cleveland. Right. Because yeah. this city was beautiful. Okay. Before, before this was a beautiful city and it needs to be, be, be you know, revitalized. But this isn't supposed to be an emotional decision, but that's what exactly this sounds like. Yes, it used to be a beautiful city, but you have to really examine all situations and possibilities in this type of uh, building process. And that's what and we're trying to do. Everybody likes new things. So if you have a new building, people want to go in there and go in there because they feel comfortable, feel safe. Because right. we are going to have security around there too. I mean, yeah. nightlights yeah. Of course there's going to be security because you have to protect the property and the investment, which are the people who can't afford it, not the investment, not the people of the city who can't afford it. And East Cleveland Police is understaffed. So... Again, you already see how the people who can afford to live there are getting basically policies already dictated in their favor because they have the money, they have the resources. So because they have the money, they're looked at as a better investment than people with no money. Unfortunately, that's just how this country is. We will have security on security the outside. Cameras. Yeah. 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 So. If it just stays there dormant, then we're not getting any revenue either. So I just wanted to put that out there. That's, you know, but we have to weigh as a community, say, you know, what can we do as a whole that will benefit the whole, even if at this point in time, you know, if it's a praise for $5,000, $5,000 is not going to make or break the city, but $5,000 is additional money that the city can use as well. But one of the things, would you be interested in entering into one of those with the city to stipulate, you know, we want this percentage of East Cleveland workers, um, make sure that you know there is no gentrification, that, that we're not displacing individuals, other concerns that maybe the residents may have. Again, the residents of East Cleveland will more than likely not be able to afford to live there, so it's not gonna be them that's paying the higher rent, but the people who they're targeting it's going to create a cultural divide. And as you see throughout this meeting, no one was really aware of that, or if they were, I didn't see anyone in this footage bring it up to the attention. And rent does go up every year for some people, so it's not like rent increase cannot displace people. So that is a possibility everywhere, not just in this situation also. So that's not, we can't pretend that that doesn't happen. Now, ain't nobody in here can pay no $800 or $1,200 or whatever for rent. So that we have to be cognizant. So in closing, right. this is the building right here. Um, I've repeated it throughout the video. It's just going to create a, a cultural divide. It's going to create animosity within the residents. It's going to create more resentment within the people that are there. And that is um, part of the gent gentrification is not just kicking people out, but also bringing people in to create, to give them opportunities more than the people who have been living there. So that's also a part of the gentrification process. So for a more in-depth real analysis on these situations, just watch the video I recommended in the beginning and that will give you more data, more real life research different examples, historic examples on these situations and how to be better prepared for these kinds of meetings and ask maybe tougher questions um, when you have these meetings. So stay tuned for more Melanated Media News.